Good morning. I just got up a little bit ago. It's just after six. Um, today we're gonna talk about some sleep training for twins and I'm gonna take you around as I spend the day with the twins. Henry's gonna go to daycare so we have a toddler who is almost two and he's gonna go to daycare and so it's just me and the twins today so stick around and see what it's like. Good morning babies. Ruby. Grace. Hey, are you ready to wake up? Hi. Where are you going? You're moving and shaking in here. Hi. Oh, are you pretty well rested? So in the morning, I feed the girls in their room, and I feed them at the same time by myself. So I have them like this. I still have them on their sides just because this is what we did Hi. <laughs> when they came home from the NICU, and they're just like really accustomed to eating this way. So I'm sitting here so I can monitor them closely um, in case a bottle falls out or in case they get choked up. Um, but they're pretty good at eating. And then you can probably hear I'm pumping as I do it. And so I'm pumping their food for their next meal. Hi, Mama Baby. Hi, Baba. Hi, Baby. Hi, Mama Sita. Hi. Hi, Baby Girl. Hi. Did you finish your Baba? Yes, yes. Hi, Gracie girl. Hi, Gracie. Look at these cheeks. Oh, getting a little spitty. Getting a little spitty. Hi, baby. Hi, baby girl. So, I am pumping 20 to 30 minutes now when I pump. Um, I'm pumping a little bit longer than 20 sometimes, especially in the morning or even at night since I'm not pumping as much anymore. Um, so I just pumped at 1 in the morning and I made about 7 ounces in each breast and then I fed that to the girls this morning and then um, I just pumped again for about 25-26 minutes um, so those will be the biggest pumps of my day so in the morning the girls desired wait time is 6 30 that's when I'm getting them up and so I don't let them sleep past that, um, and I try to not get them up before that, but they've been pretty good about sleeping until 6.30. Um, and then their wake window right now, since they're four months old, is between an hour and an hour and a half. I know that can seem really short, but that's all the longer I want to keep them awake. And in the morning, this first wake window is usually pretty short. So when it's just me and the girls, there's a few days a week where we send my son to daycare. Um, so I am home alone with the baby girls. Uh, I really like those days. It's fun to be able to really focus on the babies and bond with them. But on those days, um, I keep them up in their room for that first wake window because we have all of our bedrooms upstairs and the main stuff is downstairs. So instead of hauling them both up and down, we just stay up in here and hang out and play and talk after they get done eating until they go to bed for their first nap. So since they wake up at 6.30, by 7.30, I have them in their cribs for their first nap. Isn't that right? So it's 7-11, so we've got a little bit more time. Um, some key components of this room for sleep training purposes. This is the sound machine that we have. 
I have it on the thunderstorm noise. I'll link this below if you want it. And then we have these blackout curtains that I got from Ikea. And we also have blinds underneath those. So their room, when the light is off, I'll just show you real quick here. It's super dark. You want to make sure that the room that you're putting your babies in to sleep is so dark that even in the daytime, if you hold your hand in front of your face, you can't see it. So that's, I think, a lot darker than most people keep their room. Um, so having like blinds and the blackout curtains in here works really well. Honestly, because these curtains are a little bit lighter shade, I wish it was a little bit darker. Our son has these exact same curtains, but they're a darker gray color, and I feel like that even helps keep the sun out even more. Um, but you want nighttime and daytime sleep, a super black, blacked out room. Um, it, it's like you want to make a cave-like environment, like ideal temperature, 67 uh, sound machine, and the blackout curtains. So those are some of the key components we have um, for our little gals in their room to help with sleep. We are putting the girls in these halo... Um, sleep sacks we have the swaddle versions too but we're not putting their arms in anymore so these are kind of big they're not quite big in as big as uh what this says it's like says it's a uh, six to twelve months 16 pounds the girls are not that big yet at their four month appointment they were just both close to 13 pounds but i switched them to these ones because we got these actually at marshall's um but I really like the halo um, sleep sacks or sleep swaddles. Um, our girls are not rolling over yet, but we are have their arms out because they're sleeping okay like that. And Ruby is really close to rolling over. She sleeps on her side a lot. So I want her to have her arms out. So if she does roll over, she can get herself back the other way. They're in their sleep sacks. So I always put them down awake but drowsy. I know maybe she doesn't look drowsy but I watch for their sleep signals. So Ruby was starting to yawn and so that's how I know within the wake window when to put them down. So she was yawning and then Grace was kind of rubbing her eyes. So you can see they're in there, they're totally awake right now. Um, they'll make a little bit of noise. Um, I keep them in the same room, even if they cry, usually they don't wake each other up or disturb each other, um, and they'll fall asleep um, on their own in there, just like that. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. So I am trying to get like three to four workout in workouts in a day. Um, it's definitely easier when I'm home alone with the twins. I never thought I would say something is easier when you're alone with two babies, but toddlers are crazy. <laughs> um, try to put my workout clothes on um, and then try to get a workout in during the girl's first or second nap. And today I'm going to do it in the first nap. It's 8.15. They have been sleeping since 7.30. They should sleep until 9, 9.30. So I'm gonna go do a quick workout on my Peloton um, and hopefully they stay asleep the whole time. Okay, just finished a 30 minute ride on the Peloton. If you uh, follow me on Instagram, you know that I love the Peloton, especially being a stay at home mom and working out when the babies are asleep. Um, you can see right now I have the monitor with me as I ride. Um, the girls need to be up by 9.30. I wake them up. If they're still sleeping, they, they still eat every three hours in the day, right? 6.30, 9.30. Um, so if they're still sleeping at 9.30, I wake them up, both of them. 
Um, if one wakes up and starts crying around 8.45, 9 or before 9.30, I make sure they sleep at least until 8.45. I do crib hour. So what I do for naps is I put them down awake but drowsy. I leave them in their crib for at least an hour for them to go to sleep. My girls take between zero minutes and 15 minutes to fall asleep. They've never gone the full hour, but if they were awake for a full hour, I would then go get them, but they never have been. Um, and then once they fall asleep, I leave them in their crib for 75 minutes. So that's why typically if I put them down at 7.30, I leave them in there until 8.45, 9. You can see right now it is just before 9. It's 8.55 and they are kind of starting to stir a little bit. You can kind of see that they're awake, but they're not crying. So I'm not going to go in there and get them. They still might fall asleep. Um, it's just down time for them to relax. So I'm going to do a five minute stretch after my ride because stretching is very important. And then if the girls start to cry, I'll go up and get them. Otherwise, I'll wait till closer to 930. Uh, to get them a little bit more. I just want to recognize two things about baby sleep that I think are important for you if you're a mom watching this, if you're someone interested in baby sleep, or um, I don't know what else. <laughs> One, baby sleep is really hard because if a baby's not sleeping, then you're not sleeping. And when we're sleep deprived, everything sucks. I don't know how else to put it. Our health sucks our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health. When we have these little humans who are dependent on us for everything, it is hard. And when you are sleep deprived, it is harder. Everything is harder. So that is hard. So if you are um, trying to get your baby to sleep, know that it's hard because if your baby's not sleeping, you're not sleeping. The other thing that I think is really hard about it is competition. There is all of this competition between moms when it comes to everything and it's so hard to not fall in the trap and like I don't want to be competitive with other people I'm not posting this to like be braggy about what my babies are doing I just know that when I was trying to figure out with our first son how to get him to sleep I was reading everything I could and was taking anything that I could find and trying it um, because I was desperate because I was tired but I was constantly feeling in com competition with other moms who are like my baby is two months old and sleeps through the night and then I would think like oh my god what am I doing wrong what is my baby doing wrong what is wrong with us that we're not doing that other moms weren't doing that they weren't saying like ha 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 I'm better than you but I was doing it to myself and that's a thing that I think is really hard about baby sleep is some babies sleep through the night at two months old some babies still don't sleep through the night at 12 months old I am not here saying one way is better than the other some babies are better than the other some parents are better than the other because I think that competition sucks and I don't think other moms are meaning it I think that we just put it on ourselves to think like oh I'm inadequate or I'm doing something wrong or why am I not better because other babies are sleeping more than mine so don't do that that's silly. Don't be dumb. Don't do that. Um, I'm halfway talking to myself right now. <laughs> because as my babies are just over four months old and slept for the first time, I've already heard from moms who have said, oh, my babies sleep through the night. They have been for months who are the same age as mine. And then I feel like attacked, like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? And that's so stupid. They're not telling me that to make me feel that way. They're telling me that to say like, go you, yeah, it's amazing. And so that's what I'm doing too. So that's why I just wanna say, baby sleep is hard. You're sleep deprived, which sucks. And you are competing with other moms who don't wanna compete with you. But like, I feel as women and maybe as people, that that's what we do. So don't do it, don't do it. Anyways, speaking of baby sleep, I've got one baby up and crying and with twins um i know some people don't make their twins stick to the same schedule but i do <laughs> i seriously keep my twins on the exact same schedule i put them down at the same time i wake them up at the same time i feed them at the same time we do everything almost at the exact same time i change their diapers at the same time unless one has like a poopy diaper and the other doesn't but oftentimes we do everything at the same time. 
So it is 9.06. They need to be up by 9.30 for their next feeding since Ruby is awake and crying and I can see that Grace is awake and they're sucking on her fingers. I'm gonna go up there and get them now. Oh no, did you get your little arm stuck in here? Hi, are you stuck? Hi, oh sweetie, we're stuck, huh? No wonder. Hey, what are you doing, Grace? Hi, Grace. Are you just sucking your finger? Hi. Here we are. The girls just finished eating for the second time today. They're being chatty. Um, they both need outfit changes again because Grace, she leaked all over. And Ruby's been spitting up again. Ruby always spits up. Ruby wears a lot of different clothes throughout the day. So we don't wear a lot of uh, onesies and pants because that's a lot of work. We wear a lot of zipper jammies. Don't we girls? And I'm pumping again. This is our life. This is our day. It's 9.43. We're done eating. Again, their wake time is about an hour, hour and a half. I watch for tired cues. So they were up about 9.10 today. 9.15, 9.10. So they'll go down again between 10.15, 10.45. And in the meantime, while they're awake, we'll play and talk. You can see my second pump of the day is a lot less, about half as much as that first pump. The first pump, though, I went from 1 a.m. to 6.30 in the morning. This was just from 6.30 to 9.45, so. Okay, it is 10.30. So these girls are about ready to go back down. I can tell Grace here, her eyes have been getting kind of heavy. We've just been sitting and playing, looking at our things. Um, I changed their outfits, but Miss Ruby Rube spit up all over her new outfit. So we will change again before we go down to sleep for our little nap so we can sleep in dry clothes. But Gracie girl, she's good. You ready for a nappy? You ready for a nap? Okay, so the girls are down for their second nap of the day. It's 10.30. Um, I'm going to use this opportunity to shower. I'm gonna wash my hair. I wash my hair about once a week right now. Um, so I'm going to shower. I, you will not see me get ready. I know a lot of moms and people who stay home um, we'll get ready for the day by putting on nice-ish clothes and doing their makeup. Uh, I just can't do it, especially when I'm not leaving the house. And I have no plans on leaving the house today. That's something I need to get better about, is leaving, um, the house when it's me and the babies. But, have no plans for that today. So I'm still going to shower though, and then after I shower, I'm going to do some cleaning and picking up while the girls are sleeping. I just wanted to show you, it's 11.08, so the girls have been up there for just over a half hour. And they're starting to kind of move around, Ruby was, you can see Grace is kind of up and moving. I'm just going to leave them in there and let them figure it out on their own. They kind of whine and cry a little bit. Nothing too much. That's Henry's room. He's not in there. Um, but I just let him figure it out. Hi, sissies. Oh, look it. Somebody is on her tummy. Hi, sis. This is the first time that I found you on your tummy in here. Look at you. You did a roll and I didn't even get to see it. Are you so strong? Do you feel trapped? Yes. Hi, sis. Hi. Hi, Gracie. Oh, 
boy way to wake up. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? So we're eating again. Um, I'm feeding the girls and I'll pump here in a little bit. Sometimes I don't pump right away, like they're up a little bit early and I wanna make sure I have enough time to make enough milk. Um, even though in the day I'm not keeping up as much, but um, I have a lot frozen and you sometimes I pump more, not as much anymore that they're drinking a little bit more. Um, we're doing between six and seven ounces right now. They don't always drink that much. Ruby usually drinks more than Grace, but Ruby's a little bit bigger, about half a pound bigger than Grace. Um, so yeah, it's funny that I went in there and saw Ruby rolled over. She has been bound and determined to roll over. When we lay her flat, she's always trying to get over, which is, they both have been making moves, which is why we've had their arms out and not swaddled. Um, because one, they're Houdinis and we're both getting out of the swaddles. We're using the Halo Back is Best um, swaddles, but they were getting out anyways, um, and I didn't want them to roll over with those arms swaddled up. So we have left this the arms out and a little ruby on her stomach today. Um, so that's a, it's an exciting mama moment for me. Uh, so yeah, we are eating again, and I will pump, and we'll have some time to play. We'll probably do some tummy time this day. Here's baby girls. We've just been doing some tummy time and laying on our backs and rolling and talking and touching each other. I just saw Grace yawn. So it's about 1.30, so it's about time to go down for our final nap of the day. Isn't that right, girls? Yes. Should we go down for our last nap? And Ruby needs another outfit. Yes. Okay, so it is 1.45. The girls are down for their last nap of the day. I just wanted to address a few things that I know you're probably thinking or you have questions about. Uh, with this type of a schedule, how do we do anything else all day? The answer is it's really hard. Uh, I am a person who really operates well with routines and schedules. And this, what I'm doing with the twins is the same sleep training that I did with our son Henry. And Henry is an excellent sleeper. He's almost two and he still goes to bed he goes to bed around 7 now and sleeps till about 6.30. He does not wake up in the middle of the night and he still takes one to two naps a day, about an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours a piece. Usually not two two hour naps, but some, he usually does still take two naps. Um, so it makes it hard. It was hard when he was little, a little baby like the twins are, and we were napping when their wake window is so short, it makes it really hard to leave the house. And I don't have a good solution for that. I don't leave the house that often. Um, I also should say that I have a lot of help with Henry. Uh, when he was little, I was home with him for the first six months, just me, and then we sent him to daycare two days a week. With the twins, Henry is still going to daycare two days a week, and I have help come in. I have a gal who comes in and helps me on the days when Henry is home. So when I'm home alone with all three children, I have someone come in to help me with that. It not only helps me get everything done, um, she's awesome. She helps me wash bottles or do baby laundry or you know, play with Henry or take care of the twins. It also allows me to leave the house so I can, you know, go to the dentist or go get groceries or go meet a friend for coffee. So I'm not just stuck here all the time. So don't think I'm Wonder Woman. I don't do this by myself. 
Um, and my husband is very hands-on and involved. He obviously works full-time, but on the weekends, he is very, very active. He wakes up with our son every day, and he puts the twins to bed every night because he doesn't get to see them for very long. And so he likes to put them to bed so he can spend that quality time with him, them. And that's the other thing that I wanted to say. If you're a working parent or parents and you're trying to do this, I don't necessarily have a good answer for you because that's not my situation. We are fortunate or unfortunate sometimes <laughs> um, that I'm home with them and so I can create the schedule. If you're sending your babies to daycare, you know, daycares have their own rules and their own schedules and their own things that they do and so you're kind of at their beck and call when it comes to that. Um, or trusting them to follow what you want. And the other thing I know a lot of my friends who are working moms struggle with is I really try to get the twins to sleep by 6 p.m. at the latest. Um, that's really hard if you're working because most people aren't getting home until 5.30 or 6 and you want to see your baby and if you have you know gotten your baby up and you've taken them to daycare and you went and you worked all day long and then you come home and you have to put your baby right to bed that's really sad and nobody wants to do that because you want to spend time with your baby so that makes this type of schedule a lot harder to achieve and like I said I don't have a solution for that I don't know what you should do I'm not saying you can't follow this you absolutely can I'm just saying I know if I was working full-time it would be really hard for me to come home and essentially just put my baby or babies to bed and not get to see them and play with them it makes me want to cry just thinking about it so I'm fortunate that I get to stay with them and I get snuggles and love all throughout the day that putting them to bed at 5 30 feels like ah, and now they're to bed and we have until 6 30 in the morning where they're asleep and with henry going to bed at seven that gives us from seven until i mean sometimes i go to bed at 8 30 but you know seven eight nine ten o'clock at night whenever your bedtime is um a few hours to yourself or to you and your your partner and your marriage uh hey it is just before three o'clock and I did a unusual thing for me. I got Ruby up because she was crying pretty good and Grace was still kind of sleeping. So I said, okay, <coughs> you can wake up a few minutes before your sister. <gasps> What's the matter? You can see that Ruby is in her fourth outfit of the day. <laughs> That's so happy. Are you so happy, little boobs? So, here we are. Baby spam. Oh. Are you looking at yourself? That goes the hard thing with twins. Seriously, as I'm sitting here with her thinking of how snuggly and cute and wonderful it is, I'm thinking, okay, I have to remember to do this with Grace. <laughs> I'm always trying to make things fair. I don't want to leave one out. I don't want one to feel like they have more or less love, you know? Are you getting extra cuddles? So one of the things we do with sleep training is we always eat as soon as we wake up. So we want them to get used to, <laughs> we want them to not eat before they go to sleep. So you don't want them to be reliant on needing to eat to fall asleep. So we take a nap and when we wake up we eat so that way we have time to to play or change our diapers or to do whatever we need to do before we go back to sleep because then we are not gonna we're not gonna associate eating with sleeping however we break that rule yeah i break that rule we break that rule for the last um feeding of the day so right now it's three o'clock they will start their bedtime routine at 5 p.m so they're oftentimes in sleep training people will say you should do a cat nap at the end of the day 
and I usually did that with Henry but with the twins it just hasn't been really working out um, with two of them oh my I, hair is really I, on you huh I, oh so what I've been doing is I've just been keeping them here in the living room with us hi I love you too oh yes I love you oh are you gonna talk to me oh yeah tell me a story <laughs> so I have been leaving them in the living room from 3 3 30 to 5 when they go to bed and sometimes they doze off a little bit um, but sometimes we're just awake and hanging out and then they'll eat at 5 and then they'll do their bedtime routine which we don't always do a bath we did a bath every night with Henry but with the babes we don't because two babies is a lot of bubbles so we do like wipe downs diaper changes they get a new outfit they get lotion on and then they eat and go into their sleep sacks and go to bed and dad usually does the bedtime routine i think i hear grace do you hear grace we gotta go get the other one now